Isn't that just peachy? Completely murdered it. That's exactly what I wanted. We've got a, a cold front coming through this week and we've got high pressure building. So we are gonna get less rain, which will be a massive welcome break, but we've also got cold weather. So this pollen sub that is on is gonna be feeding them during that period, the next few days after that, then they'll be flying again after that. So this is exactly why I've given them pollen subs. So no one can tell me that this hasn't benefited them. I don't think there's much doubt about that. Absolutely caning that. Everywhere I'm putting on pollen sub, they're absolutely woofing it down, which is a joy to see because it's something they're doing while I'm at home. This is a smaller colony, but it's still on one, two, three, four, five frames. It's gonna be expanding now. The weather here has been diabolical. It's been terrible, you know? We've lost more colonies that were just small and dwindled. It's been just one of those starts to spring that I just don't want to have to see again. But we're not going to have that anymore. You know, we're going to be positive. As I said, we're moving forward. They're doing good. Everything I fed here is taking it down really well. I'm really pleased. I went to the effort of uh, making all these pollen sub and uh, getting on with things basically and not stalling. So these are some of the old style fire frame nukes I used to use. Well, I still use these and these will be a five over five in the summer for my queen rearing and drone collection. But look at this, look, it's unbelievable. Packed full of bees, look at that. That's exactly the reason why I put this on. There's nothing better as a beekeeper knowing that what you've given them has at least gone in and they're doing something with it. Let's have a little look. It's quite a nice lot of bees. You can see it's quite strong, both ends. And I'm quite happy with that. Now, this is still not ready to transfer into a, uh, into a bigger colony. This is one of, but what I'm trying to say is, is nothing more satisfying than seeing what you put on going down because at least you know that they're, they're doing something with those amino acids they're doing something with all those ingredients i'm not sure whether it's the right thing but all i'm saying is when you have a spring like this when you've had such losses that i had over the winter let's make that clear it was over the winter i had these losses and everything's stabilizing now and it's just growing now when you had all these losses you want to feel you're doing something and like ian stepler was on about last week 10% it might be all you get from this pollen sub, but I feel it's more than that because it gives the beekeeper hope. It gives you that feeling of, of, of you, you're, you're giving those bees something that they can work on and it's something they can do now because now is the time when the bees aren't flying. You know, it's like the end of the day and you know, it's, it's clouded up, it's still cold. You know, it's just, it's, see, I've got all these nukes here and all these hives. They're not flying at all. And what are they doing? They're eating pollen sub. And surely that must be better than doing nothing because they're actually taking something down. And the ingredients we've got on this is only going to be beneficial. Another one where they've virtually, it's all gone. Look, that's all that was left. The whole of that middle has been taken down. Absolutely lovely. So, We've got good takedown in, in most of the Mini Plus, good takedown in the nukes, good takedown in the production highs. The production highs are just taking it down like unbelievable. Let's have a look at a couple more. Another one going mad on it. This is all my nukes. This is all this line here. They've eaten everything, it's gone. All absolutely super strong. This is obviously one of my best areas in the apiary. I don't know why they seem to do really well here. The other side over there, I get issues. 
but I don't know why. <laughs> and I'll listen to anything anyone says because we've got to understand things, but just look at these bees on that. They're just demolishing it. I only put these on actually a little bit later. These have only been on just over a week now. That's absolutely, and the bees, you know, they, they're not got a temper anymore. I don't know what it is. They just seem to be, maybe because they're being fed properly, maybe because they're getting some decent nutrition. I don't know, but they, this is this is one of my nastiest colonies. And look at them, like little pussy cats. They're not button off the camera. They're not button off my hand. You know, if, I know that's famous last words usually, but look, you know, it's just unbelievable. They're like, hey, we're getting fed, great. Let's put that back on. I use a couple of rocks on there because we've had so much wind that they're just blowing off the whole time otherwise. So, and I get a couple of big rocks where I haven't got small rocks. But so what I've just seen does give me huge encouragement for the season. Um, looking around, all the pollen sub I put on, I mean, all of it is being taken up, which is uh, tremendous. So my kind of plan of action for the next few weeks is, first of all, um, there's a lot of people over here going, oh, I'm ready to put supers on. I'm ready to start putting drone comb in for drones. If you go back to the expression, let the bees tell you, what a load of baloney. Um, I think people are getting severe cabin fever and they need to be actually looking properly in their hives. I've just had a look at these strongest colonies and even the ones on top that look full of bees, the underneath is actually fairly sparse. There's nothing packed in them. They're not gonna start swarming. The oilseed rape is two, three weeks from its peak yet, at least here. So, and we're only, what are we now with the third week of, um, we're well not even the third week of March yet, after a very long, slow, mild winter. Give your bees a chance to get going for goodness sake. I find this so frustrating, you know? There's all this BS talked about how I've got this colony doing this and how I've got this colony doing that. If you have, great, but I, I, there's nothing around what you're saying to, uh, to make it worthwhile putting a super on. There's nothing, ready the bees are not making drones yet at all anywhere i've looked through strong colonies they're still not you've got to go with what the bees tell you which is brings me back to what i'm going to do for the next two or three weeks i've got some queens uh over there as you know i've got a line of queens about 40 of them in my mini plus so if i do find a colony that is about to get to eight to nine frames of bees and brood and it's looking fantastic i'm going to take three of those frames of bees and put them in a small box and give them one of those queens and the and the colony that I take the queen from will then be put on top of another colony to you to use those resources while that queen starts a new colony so I'm gaining colony and pulling my resources each time I do that and that's what you can do by being sustainable it it means that okay last year I lost a lot of colonies last autumn winter the debate is, what was it that caused it? Well, I'm pretty sure that it was a number of reasons and we've been through all that already, but the number one reason was lack of protein in the colonies at the wrong time of year, just when they're making their winter bees. So the winter bees were, weren't really made. And there was a lack of stores in the colony, plenty of sugar, plenty of honey that I'd given as and when I found the colony that needed feeding, all fantastic. But then you forget, you, you so rely on what is always around. And when it doesn't come, it catches you out. So I'm never gonna get caught in that. So, but, but, but because I made lots of mini nugs and because I made lots of nugs, I can bounce back really quick because I can make quick splits of my strongest colonies in the spring. I can use some of those other bees to even up the others. So we're gonna profit from the summer flow, which will be great because we can make queens in the meantime. And then when the summer flow comes along, we can then have super strong colonies and we may catch up on where we lost in the spring. That's beekeeping for you. Number of times um, I've heard stories of where people had severe winter losses and then the following spring, they just put everything back into the, they go back to their ABCs, they rebuild carefully, they think smart, and then they have one of the best summer crops they've ever had. And that's what we're gonna do this year. So I'm going into each individual colony. I'm making splits where possible. I'm feeding protein now, and I'm feeding for the next two weeks. And as I said before, this is exactly this kind of scenario I envisaged that protein would be really beneficial because the bees are trying to fly, but the weather is pants. It is flying weather a little bit, 
So that's great. So you know they can do a cleansing flight. You know they can get out every four or five days, even for a couple of hours, but they get a flight. And when the when it's cold at night, it's what four o'clock in the afternoon now, and the bees know nothing's flying now. And this is and just looking at that, I've just filmed those bees on that pollen server. What does that what does that tell you they're doing? They're doing something when they wouldn't otherwise be doing it, because I've given them that pollen sub. It's so blindingly obvious to me that it can only be a really beneficial thing, you know. And that's what makes me really happy. And that's what gives me that energy to carry on and give you that pickup because what you put in, you get out in other ways. My other strategies are, I'm gonna monitor my, my Varroa meticulously this year. I'm gonna treat against Varroa with uh, oxide, um, vaporized oxalic acid throughout the whole summer. It's gonna be a complete pain in the backside, but I want to go into this winter with super strong colonies that are clean. And I'll be monitoring my Varroa right throughout the year. I'm gonna be using a different treatment probably at the end of the summer, as well as ox oxalic acid in October, November, because it's a no brainer. I've got all the equipment. I have a really good sublimux machine Machine. I've got the gas vap I can use when I'm out in apiaries with, with less hives in if I want to do a quick vape. I'm going to do all of that. I've got the resources. I've got to think smart and pull everything together. I'm using my resources wisely in a different way this time. Okay, so all these nooks that you can see there, they are all chowing down on this pollen sub. You know, I'm just delighted and, that, and that's what it's all about, you know. So a couple of updates to add while I'm here. Um, I'm doing a couple of videos on things I'm making and um, one of them is some nice little queen cages. I'm going to do a video on that in a week or so when I get them finished. We're just putting it all together. Uh, it's a very fiddly process and it takes a long time. Uh, but I'm doing some nice little wooden queen cages to be able to bank queens uh, individually. I've seen in other places where professional people bank them for insemination and that's what I'm going to use those for. So that's all really exciting. Uh, I'm going to be going into that this year, lots of insemination on as much as I can do because I think that's the key the following year to having really good drone colonies that are selected drone stocks that I can put around my apiaries around here and flood the area with selected drones. That's what I really want to aim for. That's one of my um, uh, things I'm going to be putting into place for this year, for the following year. It's all planning ahead. The other thing is, I've had some really good feedback on the feeders I made. And if you remember, um, I haven't got anything around the feeder for when the bees come up the middle. Well, I take on all your comments completely. Um, we usually do have a cap on our plastic feeders. So I'm gonna make um, a, a piece of wood that it goes around so the bees don't fall in and drown. And I wanna say thank you to all you people who have left comments like that, because it's really interesting. I did know about that. Um, but I'm obviously so busy this week with everything and uh, it's all kind of mountain. I've had absolutely no time to sit down with, in peace and quiet to reply to uh, your kind messages because um, it's all gone a bit pear-shaped here, as you know, with coronavirus uh, floating around. The schools are all closed. I've got three kids that are now um, all at home for probably the next three weeks at least. Then there's another week before the holidays start and then the holidays start. So we could be five weeks with... Uh, adolescents hanging around um, getting frustrated because all the things the activities they usually do are now cancelled as well but it, we have to do this thing we have to work together and hopefully we'll all get through it and this level will calm off and we'll get beat this coronavirus thing but we're, whatever you're doing I hope you be safe I hope you're well be well stay fit and healthy stay positive and we'll all beat this together so whatever you're doing I'll catch you again soon and enjoy your bees bye for now